this is a part of my bandsaw that for whatever reason the clamp sections broken off so I thought a uh, perfect opportunity to see if I could 3D print a part to fix it. So this is kind of what I came up with to mimic the replacement of those two parts here. So it's mimicking the features with a place to put the bearings. So the clearance on these holes is a bit too much so it, it spins around a little bit in there. Okay so that bit there was supposed to line up uh, under here. I printed out with a 20% fill so I'm not sure how strong that's actually going to be. So I'll just need to try that out in the bandsaw and see what it's like in practice. But it doesn't look like they're going to move. So I printed out the parts again, made that one a little bit smaller and just tweaked the dimensions. Also tweaked the size of the hexagonal holes. They'd actually strayed away from the size I'd actually originally intended it being so they fit in a lot more snug now, which is good. Uh, fits a lot nicer now as well. So that's what I had originally intended to do was for that to rest against that edge just to keep this edge away so that it can clamp more. Well, that came off easier than normal. So this is the second part of the repair for my bandsaw with 3D printed parts. This bit here had broken off where the bandsaw blade would go down inside here. And similarly there. So because the 3D printer can't print overhands like that, then there's some supports here. Leave a little bit of a mark there and there. And it's come off fairly cleanly there. And then these are it's left a bit of a rough surface there, but who cares? It's a 3D printed part, so moment of truth. Will these parts fit in? Oh, it's a bit of a tight squeeze. Okay, so the next part of the design. Will the bearing fit? Okay, so I've got my file set out. Okay, one bit down. Okay, it's both of them sliding in. So next, let's see if I can tap a hole. Okay, so I'm just tapping through. And I just need to get a smaller, uh, smaller bolt for that. That's holding that in nicely. And I'll just do the same for these two holes at the back. So one thing I've done differently from that one, this one held both bits. One like that. And one like that to hold the blade in. 
and I've just gone for a slightly different design. I'm just going to have them both vertical. I don't think it should matter too much. That's not going to move. So I'll just cut these bolts down to size and then the next thing is to see if it all lines up that this slot here lines up with this slot here for the bandsaw because there's no adjustment between the distance between that slot and that there for on the bandsaw. My audio cable pulled out at this point. Here I'm just assembling the upper blade guide and attaching it to the bandsaw. I made sure not to over tighten any of the bolts so that the cast aluminium wouldn't break. When I went to fit the lower blade guard, I found out at this point why there was an angle bit on the right hand side of the blade guard and that was to accommodate for the 45 degree tilting table. So the last one was a little bit too tall as well, so I took the opportunity to reduce the height of it. I also felt it was important to mimic the base of the old guard. This rectangular slot nut would keep the blade guide parallel to the blade. So that fit nice and snug. I increased the size of some of the holes too, and that made some of the parts slide in just that little bit more easy. The underside of this part is a little bit more rough, and that's where the support material, because the printer can't print overhangs, then it prints this material, uh, just like this bit here, and you just pull that out. Again on this part I had to file out the square holes just to make them a little bit bigger. I tapped these holes for M6 bolts as before and I've put in shorter screws this time. So here I'm just refitting the rectangular nut that the blade guard's going to line up against. The bottom blade guard just sits on top of that rectangular nut and fixes on with a single nut. To get in at the screws at the back I had to use a ratchet screwdriver, a small one like this. The blade guides on this one didn't match or didn't stick out far enough and for the blade so they were pinching more towards the back of the blade so I've printed out a new one where I've lengthened these arms out and now we'll see uh, how this one goes I've also tried to increase the tolerances a little bit so that one slid in without any any modifications ok they went a little bit better I've also increased the tolerance on these a little bit. Okay, I think I need to sand out one of the edges on that. And now because it's hard to screw in from the back in the in the bandsaw, I've got some hex head bolts. I may also decide to shorten these at some point, but that will do just now. Okay, so now I'm going to give that a try in the bandsaw. So I'm just going to work out how far back this needs to go. The instruction says put it 
about a millimetre behind the blade serrations. So next I'm just going to make sure these blade guides are running close to the blade. Now this last bit to set the bearing. So I'll just try a piece of scrap from the garden. That's great to have it working again. Cheerio.